Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're here at Porth Guara. So really excited today. We wanted to show you as many pole dart locations in one walk as we can. A bit longer than normal. It's probably about six miles, something like that. Starts in Treen, takes you down to Pember, to Porthguara, and takes in Porthcona along the way. Absolutely fantastic walk. To help us grow our channel, please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon. Treen is on the south coast of Cornwall, near Porthcona. So let's take a look at our route. We're going to take you down the road to Pemberth, join the southwest coast path to Luggan Rock, on to Porthcurno and Porthguara, returning via fields. So this is the car park in Treen. Lovely field, plenty of space. Two pounds all day, bargain. There is a bus service that will bring you to Treen. Here we are, Treen. You take the Penzance to London bus, the A1. Oh, I love Treen, Sarah. It is such a beautiful little village. Oh, it's it? gorgeous, isn't it? Wherever you look, it's another photo opportunity, isn't yeah. it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Pretty little granite cottage, all adorned with little flowers, and it just, and it's a quiet place. Yeah, it generally is quite quiet here. I mean, it's a really popular area to come to this, this area of West Cornwall, isn't As it? We're but... merrily walking in the middle of the road. I know, it's great. <laughs> Behind me is the Luggan Rock Inn. Brilliant story, Luggan Rock. We'll pass that on the way to Porthcurno and we'll give you a brief history. Brilliant story. Pember, three quarters of a mile. All tarmac surface, ideal, easy walking. Why are they so beautiful? I know the common name I think is angel rods because they look so angelic and they Aww. kind of dip down as if they're catching something, don't they? Sarah, it's wash day in the village. I know what you're referring to when Prudy does the washing on the steps here. Yeah. Yeah. I should brought my pants and socks with me, you could wash them for me. Wow, it's so cute. Since series two, Pemberth has been used to represent Saul Village. Demelza's brother set up house here. Got some so snaps. We have, and if you look above this door, the lintel's the same. And even the stonework. Well, I would say it's that building then. So, Sarah, why have you brought me to a barn? When we were here last, it was all set up and dressed for season five filming. And this is where they mocked up like a tavern. Ah, you had a photo to demonstrate that. Hmm, if only. The next film location where Drake has a morning wash with Prudy. She's sort of supervising. Supervising? Yeah. Pervin, more like. <laughs> I didn't like to use that word. <laughs> As you can see, not quite able to get down where the cameramen were. They must have actually been somehow in the little stream. Okay, because the vegetation's grown up, I gave up, but um, Andrew's going to try. The wellies? <laughs> no, he takes socks and shoes off. Trudy is looking down on a half naked Drake as he takes a wash in the river. Let's go find the washing steps. Oh, yeah.
Got any friends there? See if you can get them to subscribe. So we're now picking up the Southwest Coast Path. You can certainly see why why they chose it, can you? Oh, it's just beautiful. So it's stepping back in time, isn't it? It's the colours as well. The colours are so mesmerising, aren't they? A joy. So if you survive the climb out of Pember, makes your path quite good fun though, you are rewarded with spectacular views of the sea. And the rock formations down here are quite fascinating. They look as though they're going to tip into the sea at any second. So we're obviously a walk-in channel and we wanted to show you how you could come and see these Poldark film locations whilst walking. So we've used part of the southwest coast path to help us in this today. We reckon that this suggested walk is probably verging on about the six miles. Look out for this rather distinctive triangular bracken clad mound. If you're thinking that doesn't look natural, you're right, it's part of an Iron Age fort. It also marks the junction of paths where you can go back to Treen on the right or left to Luggan Rock. So here we are in Iron Age Fort and I think it's Shrindinus, but I'm sure there's some locals that will correct me. Are you a local that will correct me? Yeah, it's Trindinus. Okay, cool. Let's. <laughs> I think I said something similar. Oh, Let's right find Lug and Rock. In there. Go you your head. What have you got then? I got a book, Sarah. Cornish Curiosities. A collection of oddities, frivolities and downright stupidities. What page are you on then? Yeah, I'm on page number 24. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this tells us that Tree. <laughs> The yeah. Log and Rock, right? And it tells me that amongst the jagged crags and large tumbled boulders of Trin Dynas is the Log and Rock, a huge stone weighing 66 tons that at one time was so finely balanced it would log or sway when pushed. That is until 1824 when Lieutenant Goldsmith of the Royal Navy, with a group of fellow sailors from the revenue cutter Nimble, dislodged it and pushed it over the edge. Such was the public outcry that the Admiralty ordered him, under threat of removing his commission, to reinstate the stone to its original place at his own expense. The reason for coming out here as well, not only to see Luggan Rock, but the view over there. Oh yeah. Leaving Lug and Rock behind us and the headland out there. Absolutely stunning. We're going to head on down into Porth Kerno. I think I need an ice cream. It's rather warm. So we're just leaving the fort. On the right hand side there's the path we came up from Pember. Those people are heading back to Treen across the field. We're going to take this path. It's a continuation of the Southwest Coast Path, and you can't go wrong, you just follow it until you get to Porth Kerno. Down below here is a beach that's pictured on Instagram so often. You might have seen it, it's Pedenvounder Beach. It's quite a steep cliff path down to the beach makes it a little bit more inaccessible. Obviously the water is aquamarine blue to die for really. Just rejoined the coastal path, had a bit of a geek down onto Pedenvounder Beach there. Absolutely beautiful today. What do you think? That's fantastic. I always thought that was a nudist beach. No, I didn't see any of that. No, it definitely had the clothes on. I was quite oh. disappointed to be honest with you. <laughs> We'll have to review the footage. You got me thinking now. <laughs> if you know any good nudist speech, put it in the comments below. No. 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 Go and film it. No. Yeah, do well no. on YouTube. No. <laughs> Just walk on. Uh. Oh, I can't take him anywhere. Back 
what you found. The map. So we started here in Treen in the car park, went past the pub, came out to the main road, took this road down to Penberth, climbed up the hill to Gribberhead, beautiful headland, walked along to Luggan Rock, beautiful panoramics out to Minak and across the bay here, followed the coastal path and we are now at Porth Kernow, well you are here. So when they were down here filming Poldark, they actually used this car park, they basically took it over and they had all the caravans here, all the uh, equipment was based here as well, all the dressing rooms and things like that. Might have some footage of that, we'll have a look. Kenner Beach, used as Nampara Beach in the early series. So follow the steps up to the Minak, brilliant. car park we're gonna pass through the car park and pick up the southwest coast path again take the coast path to Porsquare one and a quarter miles you can go and visit the Minac so the Minac is an open-air theatre built into the cliffside absolutely beautiful performances there throughout the summer months there is an option to go in there when there's no play on and it's about five or something like that but we thought adding that to this walk might be a bit much. Do you know I think this stretch from here to Porth Guara is my favourite bit of coastline in Cornwall. Yeah it is glorious, truly isn't it? magnificent yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There are no superlatives to no. describe it really is there? It just it? makes me happy. Come on then. Such a pretty coastal path. Some shade and in a minute some spectacular views. Easy footpath, as you can see. So, there's a sign here. You need to stay left, you need to go this way. Yes, Northern don't right. go inland. Head towards the Bishop's Hat. And actually on the headland over there, you can see the Coast Guard House. Coast Guard House, I mean Coast Guard Office. Station, even, that's the word. That is actually where we're headed. So, it's just after Porth Guara. They did a lot of travelling shots. It's called Gwenop Head, that area. Beautiful scenery and in a rough sea, oh, it looks amazing. Just can't wait to get over there, really. I love this walk. <laughs> this has to be one of my favourite spots in Cornwall. It is just so beautiful. The water, aquamarine, little beach down there with water breaking and gently onto it it's just I don't know there's something special about it and on a warm July day I don't think you can beat it really this little beach that we're walking beside here it's not the easiest to get down to another tricky one with not such an easy path it's called Pulse Chapel So near St Levin's Well, there's a crossing of paths. Continue on the coast path 
If you're going uphill, you're doing fine. So why have we chosen to walk all this way? It's because you get to smell the fresh sea air. You get to walk with butterflies, the wind on your face and the sun on your skin. Nothing better than a lovely walk, is there, Andrew? We are a walking channel after all, aren't we? Oh yeah, that as well. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I just love it. First glimpse of Porfguara. Beautiful, beautiful little cove. So we've made it, we're here in Porthguara, one of my favourite places in Cornwall. I keep saying that today, don't I? I'm just in Cornish heaven today. Porthguara was used to film Ross Poldark's morning dip scene. At the entrance to the cove, we just take this little path. So we're here on a beautiful evening in July. Not a whisper of wind. The sea is calm as a lily pond looking absolutely beautiful, azure blue, wonderful. People still swimming out there. So we've got our photos for reference. A bit fuzzy, but that's Demelza, and she's looking down at Ross in the cove. Now the important bit is this hot and top fig, which is here. What's next then? Pilchard catch, so the village is starving. And they do manage to land some pilchards. Now we should be able to line up this outline of rock. And that's the causeway as they're running down. Do you want to reenact that? Oh, that sounds like fun. Go on then. Dare you. So the entrance to this little cove is quite steep. And bearing in mind they actually ran down here. I don't think I'd want to do that. I'm really looking at my feet here. Yay! What's that? Are you all right? Have you lost the plot? It's right, I've overdosed on pasties. <laughs> Gonna leave the beautiful Porthgrove behind us. We trace our steps part of the way towards the Minac, but we will show you the junction that takes you across fields to St Levin Church and you can skip through the churchyard, cross fields, and it's a lot quicker because you haven't got all the wiggles and coves and stuff that the, the South West Coast Path follows. Bye bye Porfguara. Absolutely beautiful, I've had a fantastic day. So we left Porthguara about 10 minutes ago and this is an important landmark. So we've got to a junction in the coast path. There is a marker here and helpfully it doesn't have a name. Sometimes they have a little name plate to tell you where you are. But after the marker, the road or the path splits into a Y. We are going to take the left. So this path's coming more inland, isn't it, Sarah? Yes, it's opened out into a big field, fantastic views. Yeah. Those houses are the only houses around, That's... quite distinctive. But if you look over there, yeah. there's a good landmark, St Levin Church Tower. Oh, yeah. And that's where you're aiming for. So that one goes down to the beach at Paul's Chapel. We're taking this one. Across the little stream. This little path takes you up to the church. Thank you. Cornish curiosities. Downright stupidities. What you got now for us? St. Levin, a prophetic stone. Levin, a holy man in the 6th or 7th century, lived on a diet of one fresh fish a day. Between fishing trips, he used to rest on an enormous boulder near the church porch. 
One day, when he was old, he struck the stone with his fist and split it in two. He then prophesied the end of the world. When with panniers astride, a pack horse one can ride through St. Levin's stone, the world will be done. Fortunately, the gap in the boulder is only between 14 and 20 inches wide, far too narrow for a pack horse, even without panniers. Across two fields, the second has an ancient cross. Head towards the houses. to Porthcurno. So in front of Sea View House, bed and breakfast, across the road, and we're actually heading towards the Telegraph Museum. So there's the Telegraph Museum and the gate. Oh yeah. We're going up this footpath. The top of the hill, ignore the path on the left, go straight on. So we know there's a few instructions here but we don't want to get you lost. Bring plenty of snacks and water with you, especially in July. And cider. Onward. So you're heading for the farmhouses on the horizon now. Opposite Trendenham Farm and farmhouse. There is a stile. Take that stile. We're heading for the one diagonally opposite. Two. Three. Literally 30 yards. Field four. Four. Oh, it's got yeah. a standing stone in it oh, yeah. over there. Ah, and you can see the rooftops of Trine already. It's quite a lot quicker than the coast it path. It doesn't take too long at all coming back, does it? Number five. And finally, number six. Back into train. As many pole duck locations in one walk as we could fit in in one day. Yeah, if you're a pole duck fan, this is a must. You must come on this trip, it's fantastic. We've tried to give you an insight into the local knowledge so that you can avoid the really, well, it does get really congested down here at times. You've probably seen it in the news, but hopefully if you park at Treen, you should be fine. Yeah, it's about six miles, but it's well worth it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, please subscribe. Mm -hmm.